Now, um, to matters which will affect all of us, because a hose pipe and sprinkler ban has been imposed so far by South East Water, but, of course, it could spread right across the country. Oh, yeah. They said they had no choice after demand for drinking water reached record levels this, this uh, month, similar to last year's drought. But this isn't going to be a one-off, is it? Because water's going to get more expensive, there's going to be less of it as a result of climate change and population growth. Yeah, so how do we deal with this? There's a, a big question to be to be answered about just what we do, what the country does, what the government does. Is there anything we can do? The UK hasn't built a new reservoir apparently since 1991, and yet the population has massively increased. Yeah. And summers are getting hotter. Yeah, let's talk to someone who's an expert in all of this. Uh, Christian Dunn, Senior Lecturer of Natural Sciences at Bangor University. Really good to see you. What do we need to do? Because I'll tell you what's, what we were talking about in the newsroom earlier on. Uh, around this, is that we, we don't have an appetite in this country for using what they call grey water, which would be an easy solution, wouldn't it? Well, there is no single solution. There's no silver bullet here, because this is a result of decades of poor decisions by governments, water companies, developers, all sorts of organisations. Um, and one of those is developers, house, people that build houses. And you're quite right. They, we do not, in this country, regularly, and we don't have to, developers don't have to, harvest rainwater and use, as you were saying, grey water for some of the... Um, for some of the things that you need in your houses. So, for example, flushing your loo. Why on earth do we use treated drinking water to flush our loo? We should be using grey water for that. And it is not beyond the realms of possibility to do that. And other countries use grey water for that. And some properties in the UK do as well. But it should be standard. Grey water should be used far more than it is now, instead of just going straight down into the, into the sewage system and then treat it again to be drinking water. Yeah, I mean, does that mean that we'd all have to sort of replumb our houses so that grey water fed into, um, like you said, toilets, washing up water, or anything like that? Um, do it, does that mean a massive rebuilding programme or something? Well, this is where I would say, yes, it does. Ultimately, we would have to do that for our, our, our own properties. But think how many properties are being built now. New properties are being built now. Let's get those systems in those new properties, because then there's no replumbing. It's just the plumbing as normal. So, but this is not just a grey water. As I said, this is not just a silver bullet. If we all plumb our, our, our houses slightly differently, we're all, we're all solved. This is much more complex than that. The water companies have not invested properly. I mean, you mentioned there, you know, the lack of new residents was you know there's, there's issues with the actual system themselves in terms of leakage etc so they have not invested properly and they know that they've admitted that and it is, goes beyond that it is all it is also how we've used our land itself from the uk we have done a great job of turning this green and pleasant land into an almost i don't know dry dusty near desert because what we have done is we have destroyed the best natural managers of water that we have and those are wetlands so marshes and fens um the, we've destroyed them. Since 1700, we've destroyed 75% of our wetlands. And these wetlands act as the best sort of sponge you can imagine. During the wetter months, they take up loads and loads of water. And then during the drier months, when we need the water, they can release it slowly and steadily. But we've lost them. We've lost 75% of them. But, I, mean, can, I mean, I know obviously a lot of them must have been built on and developed and things, but is, is there scope to say we can redevelop wetlands elsewhere? 100% yes. And there is now a huge push. Um, some of it is funded by the government, but other organisations as well, to restore and create wetlands. And it is absolutely essential that we do so. They are the superpower of our, our natural systems to help us get through this, this problem, because we are facing a perfect storm when it comes to water shortages. Oh, and how do we achieve a, a different mindset about things like not being able to water your garden, unless it's with grey water that you've already saved? Um, uh, so many of us are very proud of our green lawns. Um, and we're obviously, if there is a hosepipe ban Im imposed, we're going to have to face our lovely green lawns going brown. Can we do that as a nation? <laughs> 
Oh, this is a, a difficult question. I was a keen gardener myself. Yeah, I mean, I would struggle with that, which is why, you know, water butts, for example, we can all do our bit individually to try to store as much water. But there is ultimately the case that we are facing climate change. The weather patterns are going to change or are changing. Um, and so the plants that we, we know and love in our gardens, we may have to start thinking about that and start changing the sorts of plants that we are growing. Um, as, as painful as that may be, but let's face it, you know, the pain that we may be facing as a gardener choosing a different plant are, are nothing compared to the consequences of people in the Mekong Delta who are already currently facing the issue of climate change and it is affecting their livelihoods. So it is it's just something that we just have to get on with, I think. Is it as bad as... I mean, I know you, you say it's a bad situation. Is it as bad as, as the water company, South East Water, is saying... With, it, with a hose pipe ban, in the sense that we've had actually a very wet first five months of this year, you get a couple of weeks of sunshine and suddenly there's a hose pipe ban. I mean, wh wh why isn't what's happened over the first half of the year sort of mitigating the hot weather now? Um, well, yeah, I am not here to defend the water companies. They must be doing more and they must be doing more, not just when it comes to treating water. We all know the issues of, you know, the sewage entering our rivers and our coasts. So they've got to be dealing with that. But they also have to be dealing with the management of water as well. Um, that could be looking at things like more reservoirs. But I can't stress enough. It's also using our natural habitats to manage that water as well. And water companies are and you must do more investment in wetland creation and wetland restoration. That really is the secret weapon that we have here with managing our water in the UK, because we are still going to get wet seasons, obviously, I mean, obviously, and we are going to get more drier times as well. So we have to have a way that to level off the kind of the fluctuations in water and water demands. And we have we have a solution, if one of a better word there, using our natural habitats, so we have to start using it. But we must take individual actions as well. We've got to start looking at how we can start to use less water in our homes, collecting water for watering our garden, for example. New developments must look at how they can use grey water. There's lots of, lots of pieces to the jigsaw here, but we've got to do it. Otherwise, we will be facing more water uh, or more hose pipe bams and even water rationing. So we have to start doing this now. And look, I mean, clearly you're talking long-term solutions and that's going to be vital for all of this. We haven't mentioned that horrific word, leaks, because <clears throat> still, I mean, the number of times I drive past somewhere, I, mean, I have a long drive to and from work, but see leaks coming out, I mean, huge leaks. I mean, there must be thousands upon thousands of gallons of water coming out. This is a massive problem, and it, surely that would make a significant difference in the short term if these were sorted out. Yep, 100%. The water companies need to do more, and so we must be putting pressure on them all the time, uh, politically and also individually as well, and society, society has to be pushing our water companies to do better. They have not done... Uh, they've. The water, com the water industry at the present time, it, it, everybody now knows it's not fit for purpose. You know, it's not what society wants and it's not what the environment needs as well. So they have to kind of pick up the act here without a doubt. Do you have any evidence at all that anyone's listening to your sort of advice? When it comes to wetland creation, yes, I can most definitely say that. I mean, there was just an announcement by uh, Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust um, just this week that, you know, they've got um, several million pounds by a company donated to them to, to look after some more salt marshes. There is money being invested privately and public money as well in wetland creation because we are starting to see, or we now know the evidence is there, how important these systems are at um, treating water and holding on to water as well. So, yes, people are listening. Um, but yeah, it's a slow process, as, as obviously, and as you're quite rightly saying, I can't build a wetland within a week. This is a long process, and we have to start acting now. You know, when was the best time to plant a tree? You know, 20 years ago. But we don't have that. We've got to start doing mm. it now. Mm. Yeah, Christian Dunn, really good to... I was going to say, people like you, you need to start working for the water companies, don't you? They actually need people who really know what they're on about with this sort of thing. Yes. Isn't, that, isn't that a sensible move? I'm not, I'm not saying you need to quit your job today. But, I mean, this is, water companies need to be employing people like you, don't they? Um, I think they are. Yeah, I mean, with, I mean, I occasionally do kind of you get approached by water companies to kind of give advice and do experiments for them. Um, so I, this is why I don't like just bashing water companies and saying they're rubbish, they're rubbish, because they know they need to do better. Um, and, and 
every individual I speak to in a water company is a f is fantastic. They know they've got to do better uh, and they want to do better. Um, so I hate just bashing. I don't mean like being like negative anyway, but I hate just bashing water companies. Um, they know they need to do better. And yeah, there are people like me uh, uh, working for them as well. Um, you know, I'm just an arm-waving academic. So that, that that's my job. Really. <laughs> yeah, but a good one. An arm-waving uh, academic. I love it. Yeah. Christian Dunn, really Thank good to see much. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was just looking at how much water butts cost. I don't even know how water butts work. Do you have to connect them to a, a rain pipe or something, a drain pipe? <clears throat> it depends. I mean, you can just have them so they're open tops and they just fill up on their own, or you'd have mm. a little sort of funnel up to, your, up to the roof or something. Mm. I mean, it's the right up. thing to do. It's, it's criminal, really, to water your plants with drinking water, isn't it? Yeah. And we all do it at the moment, and unless you've already thought about a water you see, the, you, You're looking at, I mean, what's that one? 210 litres, 45 quid. Yeah. I mean, it's going to cost a bit of money. But, but we do get rain save it in, the long, in save abundance. It in the long term. I mean, well, at the moment, we're still being warned of thunderstorms, so yeah. when it rains, it would be good to just take the lid off the water button and fill it up. Yeah. Well, there you go. Maybe that's, that might be my oh. shopping for the day. Well, I was thinking that too. Should we all get... Uh, if you've got a water butt, are they practical? Or do they just sit in the garden gathering cobwebs in the end and nobody uses them? Mm. Do you use them? Is it the right thing? And are they difficult to fill up? The other thing is, of course, you're used to getting the hose pipe out and, of course, the joy of the hose pipe is and there's plenty of pressure and all the rest of it. You'd have mm. to do that pretty much with the watering can. Yes, probably. Unless, we, unless you <laughs> raised it very high. Yes, I have it actually on the roof. That would be a different story. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, well, I wouldn't fancy that in, a, no, in the wind. No, it wouldn't look very good, would no. it? No. Uh, anyway, let us know what you think. Jimmyviews at jimmyviews.com.